Welcome to video clip 1.2 in which we will we'll be looking at modeling. So modeling is a human way of coping with complexity. The world around us is complex and humans tend to make simplifications on this complexity using models. So a model is an abstract representation of an original and a model always has a modeling goal. So if we look at this example of a map of um, a room in a house, um, we see this abstract representation of the original. The original is the room itself and the goal of this model is well to organize where um, kitchen appliances will, um, will be uh, put afterwards. So we see here um, that there are some appliances put here, some whatever appliance, this is sink, this is put here. And you also see elements of the real world that are represented in this model. So here we have a door, here there are windows, and um, here there is, let's say, an opening where there's no wall. Also, there are very detailed measurements here. You're not supposed to, to read all that, but these uh, detailed measurements help engineers then to build the kitchen appliances um, so that they will fit exactly this room. Another example of a model is this uh, drawing, this architectural drawing of the train station, the main train station in Berlin, and that has been drawn even before the train station was there. So it's an um, architectural um, picture, a drawing um, of the uh, main train station in Berlin um, at a point in time when the train station was not, was not actually built. Here we have also a model, and this is um, a representation of a transportation process, so to speak. So uh, last year I was um, buying some product from an online store and I was interested in when um, the parcel would finally reach me. So I used this model provided by this um, transportation company where we, um, where I saw, well, it's already been um, sorry, it has already been provided to the transportation company, it has already been transported to the main hub, and it's already been further transferred to some um, local hub, and the next activities that are pending is now um, the actual delivery of this parcel. So this uh, model gives me a nice idea of, this, of the original, where the original is the transportation process. So this is already related to, let's say, business processes in the uh, bit of a broader sense. So one slide on modeling theory, and that's the properties of models, defined by um, Stachowiak in 1973 already. So he um, says that all models have a mapping feature. That means models are associated with originals, which might or might not exist, and originals are mapped to models during the creative act of modeling. And this uh, feature in German is called Abbildungsmerkmal mapping feature. The abstraction feature um, says that models are abstract representations of originals, meaning that models disregard properties that are not considered relevant for the modeling goal by the modelers. So certain aspects of the real world are abstracted from, and that helps, of course, in coping with complexity. And here the German word Verkürzungsmerkmal abstraction feature. The third property is the pragmatic feature. So models can replace originals for the purpose of the modeling goal. And that um, German is pragmatisches Merkmal, pragmatic feature. All right, there are descriptive models. Certain kind of models are descriptive models that describe an original. Descriptive models always describe an existing original. We have seen the example here of the transportation process where we, say, could 
um, see in this model quite nicely the steps that have already been performed of this transportation process and the upcoming steps as well without going into the detail of some um, IT system where, which might have records that represent exactly what happens there. This is a much nicer view of this complexity, though the complexity of the IT world of this transportation company is somehow hidden um, and therefore that makes, um, makes me, let's say, understand this um, process status um, quite good. All right, um, we have here the, the children's toy, so this, um, this train. And also here we have an original, which is the, the real uh, train, the real steam, uh, steam train. And of course, it, this little model behaves similar to that one. Of course, it's far more uh, simple, or it's, let's say, a representation of this original. Here we see two different models of, of the human, the human body, so to speak, which, is, which are different in their modeling goal. So here we have, let's say, a very simple uh, pictogram type of uh, picture that just gives us an impression you should not walk through here. So the human body is abstracted quite, quite a lot. And for a different modeling goal, we can abstract, let's say, from other aspects of humans, but go into much more detail in the inner structure of the body using this skeleton. So we might have originals which have different models. So for each modeling goal, we have one model that um, uses the pragmatic uh, feature um, so that I can study certain things using this model um, that, I, that would be far too complex to study if I would do that on the original. Prescriptive models. Uh, prescribe how to build an original. So descriptive models describe um, originals, prescriptive models prescribe how to build an original that at this time might not be existing or is not existing. And here we have the example again of the kitchen. So on the right hand side, the picture on the right hand side we've seen already um, where we have the map the architectural map of this kitchen with all the measures. On the left hand side we have a generated picture of how the kitchen would look like at the end of the day. So here we see exactly, so that's the view from here to there is exactly what, what we see here in this example. It's also a model of the, um, it's also a prescriptive model. It, details or it shows how that looks like. It has a different modeling goal. It should um, provide to the end user or to the person who would then use this kitchen a visual impression of how that all would look like. The right hand uh, side plan would not be very helpful in that, but the right hand side plan is very helpful for the engineer who builds or for the uh, handicrafts people who build and who install um, the kitchen in this room. So the question is, if um, a model is descriptive or prescriptive, can we take a look at the model and say, well, the model is descriptive or the model is prescriptive? And we, I like to discuss this using also the kitchen plan again. Um, and we cannot really say whether this is descriptive or prescriptive. I sold it to you as being prescriptive because I I told a little bit about the content, of, about the context, so there's a room and um, this room needs to have kitchen appliances and so forth. And therefore we need to design it so that the engineers can then build, um, build the kitchen or install um, the kitchen. But once the kitchen is installed, that could, that, uh, these models would have a descriptive character. So the models describe, um, describe the visual representation or the, the view of this uh, kitchen on the right hand side, on the left hand side, we have all the measures and the measures describe the room exactly. So the measures are still have a descriptive character relative to the room. So in general, we cannot tell from the model itself whether it is a descriptive model or a prescriptive model. Um, we can only tell it if we know the modeling goal. So in the modeling goal is um, I need a plan to build a kitchen, then I know it's a prescriptive plan. When I have um, this picture that shows how that should look like, it's a prescriptive one. But if we have um, other models, um, we can derive, we can take a look at the model and then say, well, the model describes this kitchen 
And once the kitchen is built, the right-hand side model might as well describe how that looks like. Modeling is not only relevant and important um, for us as humans in, the, um, in our daily life and um, using the examples we've been using before, which were no um, non-IT examples, but of course also modeling plays a key role in computer science, which is not surprising since um, computer science deals with the design of system, design of complex system, especially IT systems. And computer science has um, developed different types of models. And in the next slides, I'd like to discuss briefly some of the types of models that we are using in computer science. So we'd like to start with UML use case diagrams. And these diagrams give you um, an idea of the users of a system, of the system boundaries, of the functionality, the, the big blocks of functionality inside of the system and which of the users of the actors would access certain functionality. So here we have an automatic teller machine. We have the customer, the administrator, and we have here another actor, which is, which is the bank. And it tells you that um, customers can withdraw money but can also do a money transfer and can also deposit money and so forth. So that gives you an idea of the boundaries of a system and the key actors interacting with, with the system to be built. So these models are clearly prescriptive um, models because they prescribe how um, systems need to be built, what are the components, which functionality needs to be covered by a system. Data models um, are also widely used in computer science, of course, and here um, a variant of um, an entity relationship diagram with cardinalities, where we have elements or entities of the real world, customers, orders, and products, and their relationship models. Here the original is the data, and we um, can see on all these examples, we quite nicely see um, the abstraction. Um, and the abstraction is just that the complex building of a customer with all the, uh, with all the properties um, are, let's say, abstracted to modeling customers, con containing data for attributes for city discount, customer name and customer ID. So all other aspects of the customer are abstracted, of, uh, abstracted from. However, the pragmatic feature also holds for the customer since um, the reward customer can be substituted by this entity type customer and their relationship to um, orders, for instance. All right. We have architecture models. Architecture models play an important role in computer science. Um, as they show the building blocks of a complex system and how these building blocks interact. This is also a, a picture from the, the BPM book where we have elements like the process engine interacting with the process environment, um, invoking services using service providers and so forth. So here architecture models um, show the building blocks and how these building blocks interact. And of course process models. Yeah? Process models are also models in computer science that um, simplifies um, complexity of the world. Business processes, if you think about it, a very complex um, entity, very complex thing. So we need to abstract, we need to concentrate on the main elements that are relevant for the modeling goal. And the insurance claim example, we came up with this type of process model where we have the main activities and the, and the way these activities are coordinated. All right, that concludes video clip 1.2 on modeling. We discussed modeling as a human activity in the modeling uh, basics. We discussed the Stachowiak properties of models, the mapping feature, the abstraction feature, and the pragmatic feature. We looked at descriptive models and prescriptive models and discussed um, that you cannot tell from the model whether it's descriptive or prescriptive. Sometimes, uh, we start with a prescriptive model and then later it turns to a descriptive model like also in the kitchen example. And finally I uh, talked about the modeling, um, different types of models in computer science and that concludes video clip 1.2.